every single click is where I show 99.9% .9 of all the clicks in Hearts of Iron 4 with a single play, long play style, let's play. Long play, let's play. For some reason that doesn't sound quite right, but that's what we're going to do. So instead of a short condensed version, which is kind of like a highlights reel, I'm going to show most of the gameplay in this video, show you every single click I make, explain more about in-game mechanics, and hopefully make you a better Hearts of Iron 4 player. I'm going to play kind of historical until about 1939. And at that point, I might branch out and do what I feel like. The reason why I play historical but to 1939 is to prevent weird min-maxing blobbing scenarios. I'm kind of playing more of a structured kind of a World War II game that's slightly predictable for you guys. So you know what to expect. And I will attempt to win whether I play as the allies or the Axis. And today we're going to be exploring one of the minor powers in Hearts of Iron 4. And today we're going to play as Romania. I would probably say Romania is the strongest minor power in Hearts of Iron 4. You start out as Greater Romania. What's the formable nation? Well, you've already got it. This is Greater Romania. Romania at its maximum extent. I'm excited about this because I normally rush as Romania. You know, I always rush. But today I'm not going to because I'm forced not to. And I also get to train my fleet too, because you've got oil as Romania. This oil, so this is F8, and this is your resource map mode. And you've got practically unlimited oil. So in that situation, uh, exercise your fleet indefinitely, put them on auto split off, sign an admiral. How is naval XP going to help you? Uh, maybe you could get marines? That's the only thing I think of. You know, what? actually, that's kind of valid. Marines is actually pretty good, because what you could do is marines, get the pioneers, and that gets you an attack bonus uh, over rivers as a support company which is i guess better than nothing yes it's a cheap free engineer that's decent for river attacking and wetlands attacking it will be pushing into belarus at some point maybe all right in hearts of iron 4 you always want to start by the notifications at the top of the screen let's go from left to right i want to make a big fat 40 width to division okay one thing i want to double check is what tanks are going to be best for me so i'm going to select my tank myo we have a multi-role tank designer. It's only available when you're at peace with Poland. Okay, we can't go for that one then. And this one, you have to complete the mobile tank destroyers. Wow, things aren't looking very good, guys. Because we're going to lose this and we don't have access to this one. And I don't really want to focus on tank destroyers. It's all the way down here on the focus tree. Wow, that's not good. That's not a good start. I feel like I want to do something goofy like commandos paired with tanks. As I said earlier, I like to play meta because it's effective, I know it'll win. However, I kind of want to mix these videos up and make them interesting for you guys, because I don't want you to kind of watch the same old strats over and over again. Okay, the historical path is preserve Greater Romania. Uh, however, maybe we want to do the dictatorship and fix King Carol's shenanigans. The factories are in the center here. Industry. I don't usually do this left path. My favorite path for Romania is this one, where you get to declare war early, and that's really cool, because it's just so... It's so different, you know what I mean? Like the ability to declare war at the very start of the game. It's like whatever player wants. It's a war game. We want to do war stuff, right? Type one in the chat if you want to do war stuff. So you do start off as democratic. However, you do this first focus, it makes you not aligned. King Carol takes over, but you want to kind of fix King Carol's issues because he throws parties. So it's an event that fires every now and then. It eats your political power or it eats your consumer goods and you want to fix it immediately. And you kind of want to mobilize pretty early as well. Man what to do what to do oh and this is a new focus as well crack down on extremism interesting i wonder if we can rush the fascist path as quick as possible let's do that there's a lot of winging in this because this one i'm not planned out but i'm just gonna move my army here, assign them to an army area defense move them all here and when we start we'll make a civilian factory make sure you select land and build into the land that you're going to keep hold of for the duration of the war so transylvania is a no-no bessarabia is a no-no this strip of land that goes to bulgaria is a no-no so i wish that's going to cause problems anyway assign the mayo uh, we're gonna get rid of the artillery we'll finish that one submarine then we'll make convoys and then we'll go from there research let's focus on machine tools because this gives production efficiency cap which allows you to build significantly more over time building your production efficiency and it also gives more building slots and also all factory output so you have to do it it's just standard start to every hoy game it'd be kind of cool if there was a different option at the start but there's not also you need girders because it gives construction you're always going to be building factories early game so it is essential and the heavy tank 
What I might try and do is focus on a tank that has like a significant amount of hardness, but doesn't have a really effective turret. Maybe I'll put a machine gun on it. I'm going to mix around with some different strats. This might not work. It might work. Who knows? We'll play around and have a bit of fun. All right. Five speed. Signed all the mills onto guns. And off we go. You do notice at the very start of the game, you've got a massive deficit of steel. If you want to see the impact of that, go into your production. And let's say I highlight this, for instance, you can see that we're suffering a 75% penalty to construction for our submarines. And as you work your way up, the penalty gets less and less. 60% for support equipment and for raw guns is 25%. So King Carol is a nuisance and these events will fire over and over again. You have to choose between losing consumer goods or losing political power. I think we're going to go for the consumer goods. This is going to take us from 10 civvies to 6. Ouch, 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 ouch. That is incredibly painful. Anyway, Air Force 2, F3. Right click on the mall, drag a box. G to merge, hold shift, left click to exercise to level three. We'll be using an Air Force in this campaign? Probably not. See what's happening here. So these guys are exercising in the Black Sea. Uh, then they split off automatically to repair. Then they go back to the Black Sea. And we could do this indefinitely because we have unlimited uh, fuel. Due to the fact that we're Romania, of course. I'm going to shift this submarine to the top. So because I've shifted this to the very top, this production method gets the steel first. So if I hover over, it's no longer a 70% penalty to construction. It's now it's minus 5%. So I'll get this one fixed first. Then when it's done, we'll start making convoys. Do I really need convoys? No, but there is a chance I could be importing from far away and therefore I'll need that for trade. Other than that, we're not going to be using much Navy in this game. Okay, we're going to do the one division trick again because it seems to be really effective for minor powers. What's the biggest division we've got? This one's pretty big. Big, 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 big. Yes, we'll go for that one. I might do the horse. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the horse because I'll end up grading that horse anyway. So I'll exercise it to level three. So this is a bit of a trick. that used to be a really OP in the olden days that Paradox ended up nerfing to the ground. And it still kind of works, but it's like 90% less effective than it used to be. When you exercise one division, it thinks this is the overall size of your entire armed forces because it represents one division. And if you exercise it, you gain a ticking amount of arm XP. You see this is 0 0.001 daily. Very small. But as this gets to level three, and you expand this division by making it bigger, the game thinks that your overall armed forces represent this one division, and therefore you get a disproportional amount of army XP from that. We've instituted the royal dictatorship. Hey, it's King Carol. This guy's popular, right? No. Oh, no. And I'll lose in stability. Oh, no. First thing we're going to do is we're going to revise the constitution. Now, this is awesome because it allows us to uh, assign leaders and everything for 25% discount for political power. So don't spend your political power now. Wait, because it's going to get a discount, so you'll end up with more PP in the end of the day. Press 1 in the comments if you uh, enjoy having lots of PP. Also, the joy of Romania is that we're getting four civilian factories here from trade. See this number, 4114? And you hover over, I'm going to take a guess at oil. Yep, it's oil from trading with Greece, France, Denmark, Norway, Germany, and that just changed around again. Yeah, you get the idea. You have the option to build up infrastructure here higher as well. Might be a good idea to focus on that now as well. But yeah, I probably should do that now, actually. I realize that's probably the better thing to do at the very start of the game because you've got such a big penalty to civilian construction and factories. Probably better off making infrastructure at the start of the game. I always forget to do that. One thing I want to check, I forgot to check, is under support companies, do we have trains? Yeah, we do. Okay. If you're not already gathered yet, I'm trying to rush fascism as Romania because that's the historical path we end up going down. The way Romania kind of worked in the war was that it was squeezed and pushed uh, by the Axis powers until eventually it did change ideologies with the idea of rebuilding Greater Romania, even though you kind of start out as Greater, Ma Greater Romania. It kind of cool if you gained a bonus for being Greater Romania. So therefore, you had an incentive not to lose land. And if you lose land, you lose that Greater Romania trait. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Revise the constitution. And there we go. We also gain a free recruitable manpower, which is awesome. And also mobilizing is cheaper. So do it. And also at the same time, army offense, army defense. Yeah, on the offensive, always. Attack, attack, attack. Okay, so I want to appoint a pro-axis government. And it looks like you could just do that immediately. Wow. In that case, let's just do it. Let's do it. A flexible foreign policy and disperse industry. We do something different. Shouldn't we do concentrate just for something different? Yeah, why not? So just give you the heads up. Dispersed is more effective if you're getting bombed a lot because it makes factories less vulnerable to bombing. It's kind of a niche thing, but that's not the main thing why people go for dispersed. People go for dispersed because it has that one production, efficiency, retention, and production efficiency base. Just meaning if you assign more mills onto a production line, you will take a less of a penalty to your production efficiency. 
And if you shift them around, like upgrading equipment, you'll suffer less of a hit of your production efficiency. Production efficiency is this green bar here. However, concentrate just has an overall raw output of production. Therefore, if you don't change your production lines around much or assign new mills onto them, you will over have more overall production full stop. And of course, we always assign uh, Chief of the Army first if we're focused on an army because it gives ticking army XP. And that allows us early on to assign, I don't know, Chiefs of Armies or Modifier Divisions. The King's Mistress purchases a villa. This will good event again. Back to back in a row. We are going to go for the top one. So if you don't pick an event, it always picks the top one for you automatically. But if you want to be cheeky, you just put this to one side and ignore it. And then you don't have to suffer from this penalty. It doesn't make any difference in the super long run. But that means if I, if I hold it away for a little bit longer, it means I won't have to suffer from that 40%. Consumer goods factor. I clicked it and I lost two sieves. Only two. Oh, okay. Okay. So the way consumer goods work now, if you're on par from OB or even war economy, the penalties or the benefits of reducing consumer goods or increasing consumer goods are not so much. So it is always better to go for the top one, guys. It hurts more on civilian economy. It hurts significantly less if you're mobilized. I learned something new there. All right. Heavy tank equipment. Yeah, sure. How will we take advantage of this? I don't know, because once again, apparently we lose this armor guy once we go to war with Poland. So I don't even know how this is going to work, but I'm just going to assign all bits and pieces and then just go from there. There we go. Assign the miles. If you hold shift, you can assign them all in a row and it just avoids having to keep going up and down the top of the screen to assign new ones. It just saves you a lot of time. A point, a pro, access, government, cancels guarantees with all of the Balkans, unlocks the decision to join the allies. The allies? And it also kicks up a stink with all the members that are more aligned towards the allies. It gives 35% fascism. Wow. Construction 1 followed by Construction 2. So just be aware, Construction 2 is a 937 technology. I mean, if you research it, you're suffering from a penalty to researching this ahead of time. However, in my take, is I believe this is super worth it. There is an argument to be made that you should only research things that are within your year period, 1936, and therefore you get more from your research. And do you know what? I've not really tested this. However, from my opinion, construction is just too strong to ignore, so I always go for it. And also, machine goods is really good too. I don't want to ignore it. So as you can see now, I built one infrastructure in Romania, and that's given us a little bit more oil, and that should result in more trade for oil. Yeah, we're actually getting more civilian because Italy is getting more oil from us. What tends to happen is the more you build up your raw resources, particularly in states that are very concentrated, like you can see in Bucharest state, uh, you end up getting more economy in the short term. And then when the war kicks off and resources become more desperate, then you get way more. I'm uh, going to go for silent workhorse. Be aware when you hover over these guys, if it says next to them, it has a set requirement. Like in this case, has completed focus to appoint a pro-axis government. My honest take on this you don't select someone because there's a chance you might lose them. I think with Romania, it doesn't actually matter. But there are some advisors, if you hover over them, it says in brackets next to them, only if you're fascist, only if you're democratic. And of course, you're going to change ideology soon. Make sure you check that before you change it. One thing we could also do is go for free trade. But I think I want silent workhorse first. So remember, silent workhorse pays itself back within two years. Be less so for this one because this guy isn't 150 political power. He's less because of the bonuses I get from King Carol. I guess King Carol is pretty charming, I suppose. His charm seems to make an impact on my ability to run my government. And Spain is at war. There's not a lot we can do, though, because we don't have an army for that. And I don't even know what difference we could even make in the long run, even if we were able to send volunteers. Yeah. I'm going to go for this. Naval reform, which gives more army XP, navy XP. Uh, how do we benefit from that? I don't know. But I just wanted to see, as a bit of a novelty for me, how much navy XP we could get by just exercising the Black Sea indefinitely. I thought that was kind of funny. My own little personal objective, okay. All right, the Iron Guard is the historical path. The National Christian Party is an alternative path, though. The Iron Guard gives defense on core territory, less damage to garrisons, but we recruit that, we lose that extra 1% recruit, but we gained it and then we instantly lose it. Nice. It does look like we're going to have to assign that fascist demagogue to gain ticking fascism, because otherwise we're going to have the ability to select anything else. This is a good thing is that King Carol does offer some bonuses, which is sweet. But unfortunately, the downside is he does eat into your consumer goods, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, fascist demagogue, we're going to have to do that. The Fascist demagogue not only gives you some of your ideology, when you get up to 50%, you can fire a referendum and change that ideology, but it also 
gives you the option to press these other buttons to force a civil war if you wanted to as well i wouldn't recommend it as romania because you've got good stability and to fire civil war you need to below 50 pence stability and you can hit decision to drop them down these are old school mechanics that existed in the very early days of hoi 4 and uh, they're just legacy ones that stick around uh, it's less viable these days because there's easier ways to flip ideology threat of communism and we've just gained 10 fascism and now we're over the 50 percent threshold wow there's two things that go on here one you could press this button here and spend 75 pp then another 100 percent pp when it gives you another decision to flip to that ideology or alternatively you can wait for this to grow to 60 percent for the brown ideology which is going to take a while and it'll automatically give you an event that'll fire that allow you to flip for 100 pp but you do lose some stability with that as well whatever's the easiest method for you so the iron guard is now done let's have a look at the iron guard defense and attack on core territory and damage to garrisons interesting the beautiful thing about romania is you can actually appoint the soviet government and the allied government so you can have basically a, a rainbow ideology of all the ideologies which is it is a bizarre one i'll admit but it allows you as romania to be this unique nation that can flip ideology any way you want to and you can be at war with let's say the axis and then suddenly you can flip to the common turn or vice versa to the allies whatever direction you actually want to at the time forced abdication so this causes king carol to step down and you lose all the king carol bonuses and also for a year you lose political power gain and consumer goods my advice is don't do this one immediately it's good to get rid of king carol because the events are really annoying but i don't think they even hurt as much as they used to so i think for the time being i'm not even going to bother anyway we're done on the this path the research slot would be handy yeah let's do the research slot then we'll hop over this side and do the factory stuff and the industry stuff all right what we're gonna do is select this guy proper heritage and this allows you to perfect the one division trick by adding on loads of horses so what this does is proper heritage gives a bunch of bonuses to horses i think it's extra attack it also gives you like less supply penalties on core territory which is kind of neat if you're a defending nation but to top it off as well best of the best is allow you to make horse divisions for absolutely no cost whatsoever this would usually cost you like over 100 xp now it costs you absolutely nothing and this will make the division significantly bigger giving you significantly more xp from the one division exercise trick nice all right where do we build now this is actually really difficult because there's nowhere for me to actually build i guess i could build one infrastructure here uh, it's difficult what we need to wait for oh is this there we go concentrate just finished and then we do concentrate too and remember the concentrate also give building slots and that's given us no more building <laughs> slots this not even helped us anyway where can we build oh no never mind i should have waited a moment okay so we built this event fire twice is that intentional is this a glitch i'm not sure but now we have the ability to fire a referendum now this will fire either by event or this button here whatever you choose to do ah, i don't like this because i have the ability to hire all these advisors cheaper Shh. anyway we got the concentrated industry it gives building slots okay i'm going to build a civilian factory here in my capital region which will build really fast because we've got 100 infrastructure which gives a boost to uh, construction speed what i'm actually going to do is i'm not going to select anyone and i'll flip to fascism if the event fires or i could hit this button this button sorry hold a referendum but the deal is i don't want to lose this this key this one the camellia leader which is i don't know what it does but it gives you basically a 25 production to pp for everything so i kind of want to assign everything that i possibly can do before the war or before flipping ideologies anyway during the anti commenton pack oh no the hate of the reds is pushing us in a political direction the joy of going for the brown government the fascist government is you get to go for war economy immediately fascism on the right so unfortunately it has happened and there's nothing we can do about it what i could do and be cheeky is just really quickly hire the infantry expert get the 25 percent reduction of pp cost then do the referendum so you're basically forced to press that referendum button that's what it just did there and now we have this gentleman who are you there is a way of getting the actual this guy oh hang on i think i've messed up this is actually the leader of fascist romania in the war so i've actually not done a historical path here but we're basically going as a different fascist leader the iron guard path it doesn't make it crystal clear which path you go for because this this focus was added later on in a free patch it should technically be down here because then you're selecting the leader of the fascist party it's just a little bit not very clear once again it's probably because these bits were added on at a later date with a future patch the king takes a holiday in nice do i make the joke that's pretty nice three civilian factories ow 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 hang on a second we've still got king carol's lifestyle even though we've changed ideology oh that's rubbish and to fix king carol's lifestyle you have to say the parties must end by doing balkan dominance 
or force his abdication. And force his abdication is a really bad penalty. The League of Nations issues an embargo against Italy, and you have to say yes to this, because otherwise it costs you political power. It's because they're struggling against the war against the Ethiopians, and their war has escalated, and the League of Nations are like, this isn't going well, Mr. Mussolini. You have to do something. All right, I think we make King Carol abdicate. This sucks because I'm not selecting any of my industry over here. I'm kind of forced to dick around fixing King Carol's lifestyle issues. Anyway, research slot's done. We would really love to have better armor on our tanks, so we'll do that now. At the same time, we might as well work towards radio because we're going to end up using that anyway. Do we have anti-air? Yeah, we do. I suppose we could start producing just a little bit artillery, a little bit anti-air, maybe a little bit more in support equipment and we just distribute the civilian factories around, more well, military factories around. Is there anything that we could sell on the market just to gain a bit of a boost to construction? Let's have a look. We've got some old French tanks. We have a bunch of trucks. Oh, we're going to need the trucks anyway. Sell the lot. Put them on cheap. Yeah, cheap. At the same time, we need a truck. We can't select any of these trucks because we need to be at peace with the allies. He's basically working with the allies. So we have to go for the Romanian company, regretfully. And also we're going to need trains as well. Uh, there seems to be a massive lack of military factories in Romania now. But we need to build the industry up. It needs to be done at the very start of the war. I'm going to try and build factories here, but there is a chance, depending on how the negotiations go, they might take all of Transylvania. But being that I've gone down a weird ideology and gone fascist really on, it might resolve in, result in not losing any land at all. I'm not certain. But once again, I'm going to try and play it as historical as I can early on, just then to see eventually what we can make out of this. Right, it could be kind of fun to try and play as, as historical as possible as Romania. Almost like hand, handicap myself so I can play kind of what Romania would have done in the war if they were able to do basically boom research can be quite beneficial to go for resource gathering efficiency just so you get more fuel out of uh, your core states just be aware synthetic oil will not increase the amount of oil or rubber production uh, with excavation excavation only benefits a raw ingredients in the ground at the very start of the game everything else does not apply okay we're gonna need logistics so i'm gonna go for that way ahead of time so you can see this division now is way more trained and it's got way more strength. And you can see we're getting uh, exercising a 0 0.185, 184 XP per day. You will gain the maximum amount of XP when he becomes level three. And once again, this is how the one division trick works. And it just seems to be kind of handy for nations that don't have to build up a big army early game. Forced abdication. Goodbye, King Carol. See you later, bro. And we don't have to deal with your parties anymore. But unfortunately for a year, we have to deal with a supplementary budget. So unfortunately... Is it not? No, it's this one. There we go. King Carol's emptied accounts. Not only do we have to deal with this, but we have to deal with this one as well. Nice. Thanks, Carol. And also at the same time, we can do war economy when we've got the political power. Anyway, preserve greater Romania. And this is the historical path, which I'm just going to have a little read here. This gives fascism, communism, democracy. <laughs> okay. I'm seeing a pattern form here. Join the allies, join the axis, join the common turn. Exploit oil in Romania. That's kind of cool. Demand Transisteria. Incorporating inside the Great of Romania. What? Have I got a core here? No, it's just basically talking about a historical claim, even though there's not actually a state named that. I played Romania a lot. I like the Romanian focus tree. One of my big highlights is I like that you can declare war early with Balkan dominance. However, the historical path is this one. I'm kind of just curious to see if any of the bonuses are actually worth it. But there is that one down here giving you oil in our capital so i'm curious to see that how that's going to help us anyway we'll just go from there what i want to do is avoid going for the more advanced armor the hell is this that is awful disgusting yeah so armor one this one is just steel this one requires just steel too but this one requires chromium so i don't really want to go for the chromium requirement because then it's going to hurt my economy when building up so i kind of want to stay on an old version of a tank to try my absolute best to uh, make the most of the resources that i've got what resources do we have as uh, romania <laughs> we have a lot trade's looking good for the oil right now that's uh, a bunch of trade from germany and spain and then the other spain's tried to tra trying to trade with me as well but unfortunately there's no legal path there is a legal path right there Quite an old bug this that the spain has trouble receiving lend supply resources uh, because for some reason the mediterranean is locked out even though it's technically not because if you reload the save game it'll not be a problem anymore it's a really old legacy bug so if we were to make a tank we'll go upgrade the stats from the mayo we added the machine guns on so we can fill the whole thing with machine guns i suppose machine gun heavy tank what is this model i hate it uh, romania what were you thinking uh, a single turret because it's cheap and an auto cannon because once again it's cheap 
But then again, the heavy machine gun doesn't hurt the reliability as much. And reliability seems to be becoming a bit of a problem. Reduce the speed. Up the reliability by changing to a diesel engine. Can't go for welded armor because it costs chromium and that's going to eat into my production. I'm going to basically up the armor till we get this. Man, that is an absolutely awful tank. However, it's heavily armored. It's got hardness. Can even up the hardness by 2% if we go for cast armor. That increases the cost by about 10 production per day. Unfortunately, this is the one we're going to have to go with. Even though we don't even have the production to maintain this. So this is kind of pointless. I kind of worry that I may have artificially handicapped myself a little bit too much here. Because now I don't know where to build. I'm not making factories. This could go super pear-shaped if I just don't do the right clicks here. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to rush for concentrated three for building slots. Even though it's super ahead of time. Anyway, preserve Greater Romania. We need to do the industry stuff so it's down the right side. Civil works. Greater Romania will require an extensive program of industrial development to support its large-scale military buildup. Yep, let's do that. We could swap that out for uh, Concentrated 3 when the research and the focus is done. All right, we can build a civvy in our capital region, so let's do that. And we'll build them in the southern part of Transylvania too. That might get eaten by Romania, but it is what it is. I'd rather build something now. At least it gets added to the axes later on anyway, so maybe it'll help. We're going to focus a little bit on uh, passive bonuses for support equipment. Not big bonuses, but... We'll take advantage of them now. We have a war in China. It's one of these ones that doesn't really help us because we have a high war support anyway, so there's no point sending attaches. The only benefit to send attache would be to gain a little bit of XP, I suppose. Then we can do war economy now, which gives us one civilian factory. Wait, one? No. We're really struggling with the trade again. All right, civil works, uh, agrarian reform, and then top that off as well. We can now come off this which go on to here we don't want to research that we just want to change research and if we go back here now we gain 100 bonus to research speed or concentrated three which we need that because it gives us that sweet sweet building slots producing our very first tank now and you hover over it and we're suffering from a 45 percent penalty you just shortage of steel really is romania you basically get loads of oil that's great for your economy but the amount of iron you've got is basically nothing Steel, shall I say. It's not iron in, in hoy. Steel. Okay. Infantry equipment one pop. The moment we reach the point where if we're going to build anything, we're going to build it so far ahead of time, it's not really going to be viable. Like, for instance, if you're in 1936 or 37, making 39 stuff is not really worth it. The one exception is you've got 100% research boost, which we have for the concentrated. Hence the reason why I'm focusing on that. Aquarian reform is done. Next up, the Dubian Transport Network. Infrastructure is pretty sweet. This is pretty handy. I always forget this exists. So if you are on volunteer only or lower and you want to like as early as possible take advantage of political power. This one is really good. State serves the military. It gives you a little bit of increase of political power. And to top it off as well, it gives you conscription laws cheaper as well. This kind of pays off double in the long run. So hey, this is really good. If you get the ability to go for it early on, go for it. Nations like Italy and Germany and some of the big military powers don't benefit as much from it. So that's the reason why it's not usually viable. But in this one niche circumstance, this is actually a good idea. All right, we're going to improve reliability of guns, then production efficiency, then we'll focus on quality over quantity. The only real decision to make here, by the way, guys, is quantity versus quality. That's the only decision to make. And to be fair, a lot of the bonus at the end ended up at the same location, so it doesn't make much of a difference. So just choose, yeah, you want to get a little bit extra soft attack and breakthrough, but then lose a little bit of uh, production efficiency. Or do you want to go the other direction and lose a little bit of soft attack and breakthrough to gain a little bit more production efficiency? They're the only choices to be made in there. And they're very small decisions. They're not massive, 2 or 3%. So it's not really worth threatening over. Just pick a decision. Pick one nice and quick and you'll be fine. All right, Captain of Industry. Build me civvies quick, please. And we're also going to go for Construction 3 ahead of time. Once again, don't usually do this two years at a time. However, we have the 100% construction bonus speed research bonus that we've gained from our focus tree. So why not? Uh, production efficiency. Yes. Soft attack. Sure. Breakthrough or defense. Breakthrough's bad. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, yes. Once again, I just queue them up. Uh, I most of the time select the same ones anyway. Once again, if you select the wrong one, it's not the end of the world. The differences in bonuses are very small anyway. You've got a choice here. You can invite the motor companies or you can go for civilian factories in the olden days some of the bonuses you got from the motor companies weren't really that great let's have a quick look so voxel gives speed that's the british one opal doesn't give any initial bonuses interesting ford reduces production cost and i think the bonuses you get as well are pretty much the same I'm just hovering over the traits now to see if they're any different and they're all the same so you choose in between speed production cost or just continuing with your local one 
which is this one, which gives nothing, which makes sense, I guess. This needs to be buffed. This is not as strong as it used to be, and it needs to be improved, so there's no point selecting it. Uh, the bonuses you get are really rubbish, so it's not worth your time. The Kingdom of Hungary demands the right to rearm. They must be allowed to defend themselves. That's right, because that's not actually what historically happened. The Romanians actually protested that. But I'm going to be side with the axes later on, so let's make friends. Be aware as well. This is something everyone people forget about. When you've got less resources, your production efficiency bar, this one goes up slower. Look, daily gain of production efficiency is 0.082 per day. Very small. But for instance, for trains here, this is going up 0.076. Oh, this is not a good example because it scales based upon how far you are across. So the closer you get to the cap, the less production efficiency you gain per day. So if I was to shift this to the top, my production efficiency again now is 0 0.153. I should have done that from the beginning, to be fair. Because the steel needs to go towards the tanks. The tanks are going to be the hardest ones to fill out as a part of my division anyway. I don't usually worry about this, but I think I'm going to go for armored trains. Armored trains are better than regular trains because if on logistics strikes, tra regular trains get absolutely ripped apart. However, armored trains are beneficial because they have armor, meaning they're more resistant to logistical strikes. And also, they have air attacks so they can actually defend themselves, which can help in the long run to take out an enemy's air force because then you are technically taking a tiny little chunk out of their cast damage and their air force by shooting down a few of them, just a handful. Okay, invest in the IA which is an Air Force designer and giving three mils. That's pretty big. And this is two sieves into Transylvania and 12 iron into Transylvania. That's big. And that's going to stack with the infrastructure we've got here. That's a massive boost to my economy. We've also got some aluminium here too. I forgot I even had this. All right. I don't know what to do. So we're going to build in Moldova. Once again, we've got civilian factories, but we don't really have any way to build or put them anywhere. It's really tricky. Once again, I don't know what land I'm going to lose at the start of the war. I'm going to click this button though. Regional industrial integration gives an extra building slot in Transylvania. So we'll do that. King Carol's emptied coffers has ended. And surprisingly, that didn't give me any civilian factories. Once again, this is, depends how consumer goods scale now. And they don't scale as effectively if you are stacking lots of uh, modifiers that reduce your consumer goods. Concentrated 3 is done. We could do for advanced machine tools now. And that's given us more building slots. So pop, pop, and shift that to the bottom. There we go. We actually have breathing space now where we can build things and not have to worry about losing them later on. Good. The steel works are done. And now we have an even balance of steel. That's really good. Realize we can also do the King Michael's coup. So King Michael was the second in line after King Carol. The PNL becomes the ruling party. PNL. So we become democratic if we do that one. Feels kind of bizarre, but it does feel very Romania though, because you get to flip ideologies mid-war, which is, once again, that's a Romanian thing. Next up, get those three mills. Armored trains, start making them. Top that off. We're going to start working now on Marines. We'll combine Special Forces Marines and we'll pair them with our heavy tanks. How effective this is going to be? I have absolutely no idea. How fun will it be? Hopefully big fun. One thing we've noticed with playing as minor powers is you normally have to prop up the AI quite often by fixing their supply problems. And that's the reason why we're building so many uh, civvies so early on. Because once again, the AI is going to have supply issues and I need to be able to prop them up. So I need to take care of that for them immediately. Once again, building more civs, infrastructure, all the good stuff. Exploit the oil in the capital. That gives 24 oil. But remember, it's not just going to be 24. It's going to be amplified by infrastructure as well. This is interesting. So the IAR is a unique mile for Romania, okay? And if you look on the right side here, oh, we already have this trait. Oh, this is the one they give us for free of the national focus. Okay. Because usually the generic one is all of this. But that's the unique one on the right side. Will I be taking advantage of this at any point? Probably not, no. We'll just queue them all up and then forget about it. Just forget about it. The easy way of gaining lots of stability is this one, political loyalty. Pop. That gave me an extra plus nine, I think, to stability. Worker conditions. Once again, stability is always good. It reduces consumer goods. It gives you more political. It gives you factory output. I mean, all the things you need pretty early game anyway. The Kingdom of Hungary renounces the Treaty of Tryon. We're not going to say yes to this, but interesting, love. I wonder what this one does. I wonder if we get a war goal against Hungary. That's interesting. But we're going to say no anyway, because we're going to be siding with them anyway. See this? We've got five ships, and uh, we've been exercising the entire game. Look how much naval XP we've got. We've got more than army XP. That's just insane, isn't it? That just shows the amount of naval XP you get just from exercising your fleet. It needs to be nerfed massively. It's just way too high. Exploit the oil. Now, we need 50 factors before we can get the extra research slot. This bottom one also lets us take advantage of reactors for nukes. Nuclear Romania? 
Is that a thing? This is a cool mechanic. So selling out to the other factions has a penalty. You gain ideology in that faction, but then you get to benefit from the bonuses too. So you get to branch out. That's a really cool thing. Paradox have done so well with that one. So for here, for instance, we have the option here to modernize the army for licenses. Okay, licenses aren't very good. Doctrine's kind of good. Form the peasant militia is pretty good too. So again, extra 1% recruitable, which is kind of nice. I guess we're just going to go straight down the middle and go for the trade with Germany. I can't believe it. We're almost done with the focus tree here. I guess there's the army stuff. I can come back to but there's nothing else <laughs> nope okay welcome to the old focus trees boys you complete them pretty quick there's a lot less focus let's put it that way i think one of the biggest issues we're going to run into is we're just going to run out of building slots i keep hitting this decision over and over again that gives an additional plus one building slot so spending my political power to build tall as romania it's a weird thing to say tall as romania with this big huge romania you know Tall. we're already pretty tall I never knew they stack shit that high. The industrial concern is worth it. At the same time, we could start mobilizing our arms as well, because we'll use manpower eventually. Invites the German advisors. Permits Germany to station troops in Romanian soil. Nice. I wonder if me being fascist and also aligning with Germany with focusers is going to affect the ultimatum that Hungary offers for Transylvania. I guess it all depends on who's mediating it, I guess. So we've got the new guns, so we start producing them. Why not? Start working on the artillery. Sure. Need to add on as much soft attack as we can. Civilian factories. I honestly don't know what land we're going to lose. So I'm just going to start building them because otherwise it's just a waste of production. Never seen so much infrastructure in Romania. Said every Romanian ever. Marines 1 is done. And now we can go for the Marine text. So Marine 1. Boom. Pioneers are unlocked. We're going to go for the Pioneers that give the Amphibious bonus. This makes them 50% cheaper, but I'm not sure if it makes Pioneers cheaper, though. And the rest of them, this adds a Pioneers gain organization from line artillery. So I guess I'm going down this right side. And then we have the option to add Pioneers on, which is a replacement for Engineers. There you go, Pioneers. Pioneers give extra breakthrough for Marine Battalions, and it also gives extra organization for line artillery. It's not something we're looking to invest into, but maybe we'll be forced to invest into it just because... That's all we can make. Italy is influencing our politics. We have an option to join the Axis. Do you know what? I'm actually going to say yes, which is not something that we did. But I'm really scared, guys, that this is going to be a super short video and nothing's going to happen. Yeah, I'm kind of worried. So, uh, hence the reason why I'm going off the historic. Hey, actually, no, hang on. It's 939. I'm technically allowed to go off the ahistorical now, right? Yeah, I'm allowed to. I'm going to rush Disperse 4, even though it's ridiculously ahead of time because we need building slots and this is how you gain building slots and also more industrial integration which gives another building slot so we'll pop that to the top of the list i realize it's really worth it to spend political power on on those building slot expansions because it, they're always going to build them in regions like close to your capital the ones that have got high infrastructure so it's going to pay off more in the long run this is one it's not like microing minor power stuff you know the mini micro stuff you only have to do as a minor power make trucks cheaper or make them more reliable we'll go for the reliability I'll put my uh, trains on the market all the old ones sell them cheap anything else i could sell on the market technically we need everything i'm scared to sell convoys because i run into that problem last time all right advisors is skipped no that's the one we finished this is licensing we, are we ever going to license german equipment no because licensing is really rubbish in hoi 4 it needs to be buffed massively. It just costs too much. You lose production output when you build with licenses, and it costs your civilian factories to maintain the license, so it's just not worth it. It does give a slight boost to research, and that's the only thing I think it's worth for, but it's only a 10% boost, so I just don't think it's worth. Anyway, oil. More oil in Romania. That's the thing, right? Look at all this oil now. So high. And no one's trading with it. When the war kicks off and oil demand skyrockets, we will get people who will trade with us, though. Trust me. Once again, we've run out of building slots. I'm so we're going to regret building there if I never get to take advantage of them. Oh, we've got the option to build another one. So that's where we'll build. Yeah, there we go. It all worked out in the end. Germany would like to purchase those light tanks that have been on the market for a billion years. Don't usually focus on excavation, but I need the steel. And it's also nice to trade with the oil. I'm not benefiting from the oil trade much now. Slovakia is taking it. However, when the war kicks off, oil will be desperately needed. And I know Germany... And Italy is going to pull loads of oil from me. German, Romanian, oil, exploitation. The Sudan gains oil from this. Oil in the Sudan? Well, there is now. All right, we're going to go for this one. Form the peasant councils because it gives us 1% recruitable. Once again, I'm queuing the civilian factories up here because 
I don't know how this is going to go. And we maxed out our special forces doctrine just from exercising our fleet. Did I tell you guys that I think they should nerf the amount of naval XP you get from exercising your fleet, even though it's five ships and we've maxed our special forces doctrine? Yeah, Paradox probably should nerf that. That probably would be a good idea. So we're focusing on artillery. I just realized I assigned that without the Mayo. Do that again. There we go. With the Mayo. There we go. What we'll do is we'll produce this rubbish tank for as long as we possibly can. And then what we'll end up doing is adding upgrades as we go when we've got a good stockpile of the old tank. And we can look to expand as we go. But right now, we need the stockpile. We need it in the divisions. We need at least three divisions. All right, so we do, make, do we make the division now? I think we're going to try and go for a 36 or a 35 combat with it. This is the one we're going to go with. So a heavy tank, heavy tank. But then if I try and add on the infantry, it's still going to be 30 XP. Not really a lot we can do about that, though. This is why making divisions in Hoi, you should only really make one division because it's just insanely expensive. Okay, this is what we end up with. Maintenance, logistics, pioneers, support, support. 140 XP to make this. Wow, chow, chow. It has to be done. God, 140 XP though. That's an eye-watering amount. The only way I could reduce the cost of that is if I were to change doctrines, pick a officer core that makes it cheap to change this doctrine type. That's the only thing I can think of. Even then, would that even be a net gain? Probably not. Pop. Can we even train one of these? Oh, we can train four. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. And we need a lot of armor. Oh, so much armor. This is where we're going to make making mills. Oh, make mills in this region that we might lose. Deal with the devil. Form the peasant councils. Giving us 1% recruitable. A little bit of ticking communism. I'm going to go with anti-communist raids. So we're basically getting communists in our government to say, let's eject them. Let's get more passive bonuses. So just remember, heads up, whenever you go for these ones, see these ones here? They cost more to produce, but they give better stats. And the stats they give are really worth your time. However, it takes time to produce this new equipment. So therefore, the stats won't take effect immediately. However, these ones here, these passive bonus upgrades, these give the bonuses immediately. When the research is complete, you gain 5% soft attack for leg infantry immediately. So they are worth the weight in gold. Just be aware, the stats are better if you produce this equipment. But overall, it is more effective to gain the passive bonuses. And here we go. It does appear to be war. The Germany's ask us to join the war. The Anglo-Polish Alliance. We usually see that event. Maybe it's something to do with what Romania's done. I don't know. And our economy's maxed out. There's no way to build. Technically, these three states are all classed as Soviet Bessarabia. Do we build into them to let them get them back later on? I really don't know. Building infrastructure for the sake of infrastructure here it feels really pointless, but is what we're doing. So right now we're building a significant amount of equipment here. And you're probably thinking, why are you building this? You'll probably get this land lease from the Axis anyway. Now we could, but the problem is relying on the AI to produce this equipment is going to be really difficult. I just don't trust the AI to be able to do it for me. So in this case, that's the reason why I've gone down that path. Do you know what? I've changed my mind. We're actually going to make it 34 combat width. That's going to make the tank situation a little bit easier. So the reason why we've gone so high in reliability here, and we've also gone for maintenance companies, is the combination of those two things is going to minimize the amount of tank losses we're going to experience. Because the individual tank cost is so high, and because we're Romania, which doesn't have a lot of production to begin with, I want to kind of mitigate any possible penalties that we could experience throughout the entirety of the game. Here we have 50 factories. Get that research slot. Research slot that we're probably not even going to need. Oh, no, we lost our 50 factories. This is a really annoying mechanic. It needs to change this. So when you gain a factory in Hoi 4, you can gain a civilian factory from trade. See this number two, three. And it actually affects the physical number of factories you get. Can you see that? Plus three from trade. So it's artificially showing that I've got civilian factories. But if at any moment the AI decides to cancel a trade, which it tends to do over and over and over again, this focus will cancel. The way it should work is when this focus is going, it should continue all the way, even if you drop below 50 factories. It's, it's a bit of a silly system that it lets you go for it and takes it away from you. Then it gets you go for it and actually takes it away from you. It's such an annoying thing. So I'm going to have to wait a few days to wait for a few factories to build to realistically get over 50 before we can go any further. Because look, now we've got eight from trade. It just shows the amount of trade people are trading with us for the oil is massive now. Look, Germany just wants all that oil. Suck all that oil up. We're going to go for free trade. And what that means is instead of half of our oil, half of this being put on the market, 80% of it will be put on the market. And we'll also go for limited conscription too. The downside to this is means that our steel has been sent to the market as well. So we'll get more from the Soviet Union, which 
is uh, an unlikely trading partner for now, but you'll you'll see as time goes on how that'll change. All right, we have 50 factories now and seven are from trade. I think we might be in a good situation. I think you need at least 51 factories to do this focus. But now 50 of them are physical factories and six of them are from trade. I think we're in a good spot now. Still in the state here. I don't know what land's going to be taken from me. I know I'm going to lose Bessarabia when I play this historically, um, but I don't want to be a situation where we attack the Soviets too early because then we're going to be in a situation where the Germans might not be prepared and we might just get completely dumpstered. 100% war support and 100% stability of Romania. Man, Romania is drunk. You can also go for the commando guy too. Gives extra attack. And can't... Oh, we can get another one. Oh, okay. So one thing that this is new, the value added this recently. You want to buy a train, Greece? Sure. Sure. This guy also gives attack, but he also gives special forces cap plus six. That means now the greater proportion of our special forces represent our overall size of our armed forces, meaning that we can now train up more special forces, which in this division is eight Marines that are special forces. So we can train another one. The way special forces work is if you go into army here, you can see here. So we're allowed to field 30 special forces because the proportion of special forces to our overall army size is 15%. However, there is a minimum of 24. So you're allowed to 24 for free, but then it has to be an equivalent of 15% of your total armed forces sizes. I don't like the mechanic. It's not good and it's kind of hard to explain, but I realized too, we should probably should deploy these, train them up with horses and then convert them over. You know what? I am going to do that. So this is a little bit of a cheeky strat to uh, train up your army and minimize the amount of losses you get. So what we're going to do is train these guys to level three as horses. Then we convert them to tanks and therefore it'll cost less equipment to exercise to level three. So therefore potentially lose less tanks overall. The University of Bucharest and we can go for nuclear reactor construction speed if you want. I like that a uh, paradox have had 25% construction speed. So that actually is an amount that's high enough to be worth your time. And reactors do take a long time to build. So they are definitely worth for the 25%. We'll work on army stuff now. I'm interested to see now that now I'm at war with Poland. Well, I'm not at war with Poland. I'm at peace with them still. But will this disappear? Because it says at peace with Poland. That really sucks, doesn't it? Like you lose a Mayo and all the progress you've made on it because you're at war with Poland and you have nothing to stop that from that. Stop me from affecting that. Oh, that really sucks, doesn't it? Not fun mechanic. Not fun. All right, Marines 2. Gives extra soft attack and org for marines. That's what special forces do really well. They have really, really high organization. So stack it even higher. Plus soft attack is a nice benefit as well. Germany's requesting garrison manpower support. I feel like I want to give them a lot. Because the more I help Germany right now, the more it's going to be beneficial to them in the long run. So I'm going to give them 400k. That's a lot of manpower. However, I need to help them as much as possible. Because me propping up Germany here is going to make a long run in the war effort and i'm going to try my absolute best to prop them up as much as possible you tend to find that these little things you can do for the german ai and it benefits them a lot when they do uh, barbarossa okay we're going to stop exercising our fleet now we don't need that anymore we can do refit aggression there we go the fleet is ready and we'll put them on strike force here and just leave them there for the time being then the projecting naval supremacy in this region however it's not going to be enough to deny uh, the soviets from naval invading which is a uh, common thing that they do from Crimea to here it happens so frequently all right we're in a good spot right now and it's a good spot because we've run out of building slots but if we join the war we can ask for land off Germany and use this to build up I think that's what we're going to do so what we'll do is occupy territory and put it on a brutal oppression now from testing brutal oppression is really strong it requires a lot of garrisons to maintain however you get very little resistance let's do it we're not building compliance in the long run so Going for these bottom ones that reduce resistance tends to be better in the short term. We're going for the ones higher up, give lots of resistance initially, but however, in the long run, you tend to gain more compliance. It's very difficult to gain compliance though when you're at war with a major power and they've got a government in exile. They obviously cause a lot of resistance that way. I have a feeling I'm not going to lose any land. They have cause on this territory, Hungary. I wonder if Hungary might actually join the allies. It might create a weird wonky scenario that if they can't get Transylvania, They'll join the allies. It's going to create a really weird world, though. Okay, it's time. Don't know what to build, so I'm just going to line up a bunch of AA so I don't lose any civilian production. It's probably something I'm not even going to construct, but at least I'm using production. I have the option to change these two ships into mine layers, and it's only going to take a few days. I'm actually going to refit them and change them to mine layers. Shift that to the top. Change that to refitting. Yeah, it's already been changed. And then we can construct that and be done with it within a few days. And having a mi few mine lanes is going to be useful because I get to lay mines in the Black Sea before I'm even at war with the Soviet Union. 
which feels bizarre, doesn't it? I can lay mines in a region, but war isn't even going to happen until later on. I guess that makes sense in a weird way, but it's kind of annoying in the long run, particularly for multiplayer. Anyway, regardless, that's done. All right, the boys are here now. Join the war. We are now at war with the allies. Well, what's left of them anyway? And then we start mine laying in the Black Sea. So mines, what do they do? They reduce enemy movement speed in these regions. They increase accident chance astronomically. And they also project more naval supremacy in that region. And if we max out the amount of mines in this region, we might be able to deny them from doing naval invasions, which will be super handy. Also, Romanians are being a weird thing where they're doing a focus right now. And I think the focus they're doing is the one to take Transylvania from me. So I think we might end up in that wonky scenario that we talked about earlier where Hugru might join the Allies. Which is in a weird way a good thing for me because that means I have a, a nice big border and, and land that I could potentially take. Do I want to benefit from aluminium though? Not really. Anywho, change tank. We can exercise that to level three. We've only gained a tiny amount of XP from this though. This strategy does not work as effective as it used to. This used to be a really easy way of getting loads of uh, XP for free. And I don't think it's a viable strategy anymore. So I'm going to probably say don't recommend it. So we give up Northern Transylvania. We gain a war goal. Or they gain a war goal on us. Germany has brought to our media our territorial dispute with Hungary. At the second Vienna war, they have decided that Northern Transylvania should be returned to the Hungarian control. Oh, they lose so many factories. No will not give it up. Rejects the event. Oh, I'm probably going to super regret this. Well, Hungary has done the Axis. And they didn't get any land. So all that build-up that I talked about forever and ever, it didn't even matter. All right. Okay. All right. Looking down, the focus is here. Most of them are attacks, but some of them give free divisions. This one gives extra recruitable manpower. You gain a free division for free. Kind of nice, I guess, but I'm going to delete it just to get the equipment back. How's the mine lane going? So F2 to go into naval map mode. You can see we've laid a total of 43 mines. You can lay a maximum of 1,000 mines per uh, sea region. You've got the option now to also gain a building slot, so take that. But there's also this option as well that gives an additional building slot, but we lose war support and stability. I wouldn't recommend that one. It's one of those kind of ones that you have to be really desperate to go for it. I would not recommend. We have the option to improve the Mayo now for our tank. See this little plus arrow? It basically means we've researched a Mayo slot. We've got the funding for it. The Mayo's leveled up. And now if we click on this, we gain bonuses. No, we don't. It's because we're at war with Poland. So if I want to, I don't know why I ever would, but I lose all these bonuses. Why would I ever do that? So I either keep producing the existing model or I do a upgrade that gets me all these penalties. Not happening. Not happening. It's because of a wonky, weird thing in this game that if you're ever not at war with Poland, you lose this Mayo permanently. And that means I lose these two bonuses and also the bonuses that I get just flat from the, the Mayo itself. It's such a weird mechanic and I, I don't even want to talk too much about it because I feel like I'm more confusing you guys and helping you out. So this is an interesting strat to think about because I've maxed my building slots out. It's kind of pointless going for construction because what we're we going to build with construction, we're not going to build anything. So in this case, it's better to go for production efficiency cap, which gets overall more production efficiency in the long run. Oh, I see. Uh, the Italians are losing Libya again. I wonder if I help out here, what difference it would make. You know what? I want to try it. We've got this guy who's got the attack. Then we have a field marshal that has logistics wizard, which is really good. And if I was to move you guys here, what difference can it make? This could be a disaster. Bulgaria's in the access. Can I get access to Greece? I can. I'd recommend you guys go all the way down to here. I'm going to send them into Greece and then send them across the shortest possible route to here. And I just want to see if I can help out my boys. Also, motorized priority is essential for these big divisions. And then fallback line. We've been intercepted here. Disengage. We're probably going to lose a few ships here, but we've arrived and the supply is okay. Can I make some gains here? No, it's very difficult to make gains here. Vichy France wants to send us convoys. That's nice of them. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to lose a convoy here. We can disengage. So what's happening here is our tanks are getting intercepted. If I'd known ahead of time, probably would have tried to help them out in Libya a little bit just to give them a bit of breathing space. It doesn't look like I can help them out much here. The stats are just too much because of lack of supply. Now this is pointless. I'm gonna have to pull out of here. This is a net loss. It might be more beneficial just to delete the whole division. I, I'm losing a bunch of XP from that. Regrets boys, regrets. As we pull out now, we're gonna get intercepted again. Oh no, no, no. No, we're not. No, we're not. Never mind. Oh yeah, we are. For some reason, you've chose to go through this region, the Aegean Sea. Why have you chose to do that? And you could have just landed here into a nice safe route. That's why I got access. I'm going to disengage with all these. I'm not even sure this makes much of a difference. I think when you retreat, the retreat speed is higher, but I, I could be wrong. See, what's happening here is I'm not losing the division as a whole, but I'm losing portion of the division 
which has resulted in a massive net loss of tanks. Once again, this happens, you know. It's totally okay. I want to experiment with Hoi 4. I'm not just going to sit on my ass and do the same strats. But it's kind of nice that I'm experimenting, playing things out. I know you guys in the chats, some of you be on mid-max pros, you're like, mistake, mistake, ah, oh, sorry, mistake. That's cool. That's the idea of, of every single click videos. You see the, the good things, you see the bad things, and you can learn from them. I still need loads of mills. Ooh, okay. We'll finish that one that's partially, then we're going to build a bunch of mills in all these regions. Oh, that's perfect. We can click the button again to get some more building slots. We'll take advantage of that. I feel like I want to go for working conditions. Just to get the stability up once again. Keeps the factory output going. And once again, we want to produce as many of these tanks as possible. We have a Mayo upgrade here. You can see the up arrow for the guns. And if we go for this, it will give us breakthrough and soft attack. Soft attack for guns is super big. Highly recommend. The Soviet Union is justifying on us. An event will fire very shortly when the justification completes. That they take this land from us. This is the one historical thing I am actually going to do. It is hopeless. Yes. Give them one third of my territory. God, that feels bad. Ouch, that hurt. That really did hurt. Looking down these focuses here, and I realize this one offers the Mayo for the tank again. So we might be able to go back into tanks again and start developing this Mayo. There's a heavy tank bonus here. This is all armor tech, and this is armor tech too. So I kind of want to stick down this right side. Okay, it's not great. It's not perfect. It is what it is, but I'm okay with that. All right, we've got an option to actually get into a bit of combat here. We're going to move our troops over, and I realize right here we could help out the Italians by trying to counterattack the British. Looks like we're doing a jolly good job too can't pierce us we're pushing in over a river so we take advantage of the marines counter-attacking in two locations and that went really well damn look at romania pulling their way in the meantime we'll just put you guys here on a four bat line just if they enable them maybe we can push them back into the sea we'll just keep that supply down also flame tanks do we have a replacement though i don't want to go for flame tanks unless we're replacing something to be honest with you we need all of these if we remove the artillery we'll lose 25 soft attack no i don't think this is one instance i can actually do flame tanks and that really sucks and i feel like i want to rush concentrate again because we've run out of building slots again what if i ask the control of these states and germany says no so how do you know if germany's going to say no this is one of these legacy mechanics that's kind of hard to explain but if you click here it says yes we're willing to offer you land but if I click Krakow, can you see this tick here? And I click it, it turns to an X. And they said they're not willing to give this. The reason the way it works is it's based on the amount of contribution you've made to the war. And if your contribution has been unbelievably low and practically nothing, that's the reason why the AI isn't willing to offer you anything. You get nothing. Also, improved allied propaganda films giving you and war support. War support doesn't help me right this second, but if I need to mobilize or if I need to gain more defense on core territory, it is pretty worth it. So it's just one of those things. Take care of it now and then it'll take care of itself. Also, we're going to build an agency too to build a spy network inside the Soviet Union. It's going to come in, it's going to come in help in the long run, so I'll just take advantage of it now. How's the supply situation going? Oil from Vichy France. Yeah, what you tend to find with fuel is no one really wants it initially, but as time progresses, when war happens and the demand for oil scales, they tend to take loads of them from you. It's kind of why oil is one of the crappiest resources in, in Hoi 4. Steel was the best because you always need the production of steel to keep up the military factory production. We're going to trade with Vichy France now and get steel. At this point, what do I do? Do I build more AA again? I don't know what to build. Oh, we're at war with Greece. So let's help out the Italians. We're not going to do much here because we don't have really a mountaineer tanks. These are awful in this terrain type. But we'll try our absolute best to help out. Italy sent support. Thanks for that support. A random event. The fascist Italy can offer all the fascist nations around the world. Even nations like, I don't know, Peru that are fascist. And Venezuela benefit from 2,500 guns that just come out of nowhere. We'll sign the planes onto my army. How much will they help? Probably not very little. Trying to help out here. Doing a little push. If we can grab this port in the south. It's a bit limited once again. But we're attacking into hills. The mountains are just impossible to break, so I'm just going to give it a try. Acquire modern tanks and mobile tank destroyers. I can't do it oh, because I need to do artillery too. Okay, we have to go on the left-hand side as well. Okay, first thing we're going to go for the spy network is the localized training centers. This is expensive. It costs continuously 10 civilian factories over a 30-day period, which is pretty massive. However, it lets you get uh, Soviet spies, which can build a network in the Soviet Union significantly quicker, so it is worth. Yugoslavia has joined the Allies, which is... Kind of cool, but don't know how it helps me. I guess I can gain building areas from Yugoslavia, potentially. We don't have any claims on any of this, so they're not willing to give the land pretty easy. The way it works is that they're more likely to give you land as a part of this. Ooh, we're able to get Krakow. Ooh, I'll take it. There we go. Romania outside of Romania. 
And then we're going to go on oppressive, brutal oppression and max garrisons out. Means we are going to need some guns as time goes on, but we can alleviate some of the stress on Germany over time uh, by taking some of the garrisons off them. Has that got any resources in it? Yes, it has. It's got some steel. Nice. Oh, hello. Naval invading behind me. Free opportunity for encirclement. I'll take it. Yugoslavia has collapsed. Oh, we get more land. Oh, we didn't get Belgrade, though. Bel oh, actually, maybe I don't want Belgrade because this is the one that's got steel in it. And then we can build building slots inside it. Build the building slots. Build factories in the building slots. That's what you do, Dave. Localized trading centers is done. Then we can go into decisions and click on Moscow and gain a Russian spy and put it into Moscow. Also, we want to get a few more upgrades in here. The ones that cost only five civilian factories and get at least six upgrades. I think six or five. Fifth upgrade will give you an extra spy. And plus, you can get another extra spy by getting an elusive gentleman. So three spies is the maximum you're allowed without additional ones from becoming a spy master or getting extra ones from your focus tree, which I think is remaining you don't have any extra ones because I don't think spies even existed when the Death or Dishonor focus tree came out. All right, theorist. This reduces the cost for land doctrines by 10%. It's saving you 10 army XP. Do it, and then we could do our doctrines. Oh, the question, eh? The question, what always is the best? What is the best? There's a part of me that wants to do something a little bit different by going for the tank breakthrough, even though these tanks don't even have a lot of breakthrough because they have machine guns. Then I get to take advantage of the extra recruitable population at the bottom of the focus tree. Yep, it's opposite day. Let's do something a bit different. The upgrades I usually go for is S pills because it reduces the chance of getting detected. Army department, because knowing about the army is kind of useful, I suppose. I usually interrogation, I usually do. Then maybe econ or maybe near AV or Air Force. Just get five upgrades. Go for the ones that are cheapest that allow five civilian factories. There's no point going for the more expensive ones. So this is a little bit of a change that I would benefit from. So if I were to go for maintenance three, increase capture ratio by 0 0.01 for, for every tank battalion that's a part of the division. So this is something I'm going to benefit from. We'll come back to that later. So as you can see here, brutal oppression will reduce the resistance strength down to 10% if you ma have the maximum strength of the garrisons, which you really should. And that means you will get a very small amount of resistance over time because you are so heavy handed. Uh, potentially, you could get a lot more resistance if, for instance, you weren't as heavy with them. For instance, look at this 41 resistance inside of Warsaw or Paris, 37%, where I'm only getting a measly 29%, which will go down even further or even less in these uh, Serbian regions. The Whispers of Revolution. So this is basically a thing that increases the resistance in all Polish cores. However, if you keep on top of the garrisons, you'll not have a problem. Slight change here. I'm going to replace this one tank on one piece of artillery, giving the 35 combat width that I aimed for. And that means now we're balanced on our tanks, which helps out massively. We're going to do a few things here to try and help out the Axis. So I'm going to take become the Spy Master, which will give me two more spies because there's two major powers in the Axis, Germany and Italy. You get one spy for each. And what we'll try and do is gain as much as we can spy network inside of the Soviet Union to build a collaboration state. Now, one thing that happens quite frequently is they push all the way to about here. They, they always fail to take Stalingrad, but they always take Moscow and just east of it and around about here. This is just not enough to cap them. To cap the Soviet Union without a collaboration state, you basically need kind of like, like this, everything kind of east of the Urals, big chunk of it, and then the cap is a really hard place to take because if you go into supply map mode look at the supply depots there's barely any they're really far apart and the ai really struggles with bad supply regions so how do you fix that if you were to take just west of the urals you can cap them with a full collaboration state which is hopefully what i'll aim for and then they can cap the soviet union and then we'll have a super powered germany i'm basically propping up the ai it's that old chestnut again when selecting spies usually a linguist is pretty good but otherwise go for a seducer because what a linguist does, it allows them to gain that nationality of that nation, which allows them to build spy networks quicker. And it's something just good to build spies in over a long term. By the way, I use the hotkey of X. X just builds spy network. There is a strategy that when you've maxed your spy network, you put them on quiet intel, they'll never get captured, but they never build the network anymore. Yeah, I never, I never usually do that. The network is inactive. Yeah, you don't do that. You just change that back to X and then build the spy network. And then we need to build and plan a collaboration government. I think I could probably just do that now. So if you're not familiar with it, these are operations. So when you build a certain percentage of a spy network inside of a nation, in this case, we've got around about 50%. You can go into decisions here and your intel agency and do a prepare a collaboration government. I don't think there's an upgrade that allows you to get collaboration governments easier or quicker or cheaper. No, I don't think so. 
I always wonder what the commando trait does. The biggest issue with spies in Holy 4 is they are beneficial, but it's just certain operations are kind of useless and certain operations aren't very good. Like everything in life. Some things are good and some things are not so good. Anyway, we're going to do a plan of collaboration state. We're going to say automatically commence it when it's ready. So there's like a preparation phase and then there's an execution phase. There's no point waiting around. Just execute it immediately. It costs you 200 support equipment. It'll cost you 2,000 guns and it'll cost you 11 civilian factories think oh yeah 11 civs over 60 days yeah that's what it means and then prepare it automatically and off you go what we're doing is just acquiring all the materials required like now we're acquiring the civilian factories then we'll prepare automatically then we gain 30 percent collaboration you do three of those or four of them and then you'll have the max collaboration state inside of the soviet union meaning when you capitulate them they'll have max compliance which will be a lot easier to resist and also it reduces the surrender limit so you can cap them a lot earlier west of the euros instead of east of the euros i'm sorry there's a lot of info to get out there just spit it out like a machine gun always select spies that are the nationality of that nation we haven't got any soviet ones can we recruit another one no you can't do the decision i think you can do the decision once every six months so you're just going to select any old spy for now we'll go for the seducer because they're less likely to be captured also be aware that the spy network this blue area if you hover over it, it actually says what it does so with a 62% strength here, which gains 0.5 per day, you will result in a naval invasion defense if you were defending a 66%. So a massive defense towards naval invasions. A massive planning speed bonus of 33%, which is kind of mad. It's not really a good stat, but the best stats are these ones. Can you see this? Max planning factor minus 66%. If you have a full spy network instead of a nation, which is very difficult if it's a big nation like the Soviet Union, but if you have a max spy network, you can reduce the planning by 100%, meaning planning bonus is useless. We know so much about your nation that anytime you plan an attack, we know it's coming. And you can also reduce the max entrenchment by 5%. So it has amazing potential to destroy an enemy for planning attacks. And it also has a massive benefit to you for uh, denying them entrenchment. It tends to be the most effective for uh, being defensive, but overall it benefits both. All right, mobile tank destroyers, which unlocks the Mayo. Can we train some more tanks? No, we can't because we're at the special forces cap. But what we can do is train some horses deploy them that makes up a large proportion of the main part of my army and therefore we can have a higher percentage when we deploy them of special forces does that make sense it's really hard to convey some of these terms all right another spy is available we can get a soviet spy which builds a network i think 33 percent faster and we'll build it in all these cities local to uh the soviet union option for another building slot so we'll take it build inside my capital regions and you can see we reduce the resistance now down to 10 percent which is amazing. The reason why this is so effective is because certain states have higher resistance than normal based upon uh, governments in exile. Like if you look at the, the Polish focus tree, there's like a whole focus tree that they've got, which can boost resistance inside of their nation when they're away. This is all about face fighting the enemy whilst away from Poland. And there's loads of options to boost resistance. France has got it too. The Netherlands has got it too. So has Poland. So it's best to use brutal oppression in those regions to keep the resistance down. If you're a powerful nation like Germany and you've, you've min-maxed your production really well, you might even need to bother. But it's just something that's a good FYI. An agent has been captured, which does happen. And a Polish operative has been detected as well. So when this happens, my advice is immediately rescue them by doing the operation. Commence it, do it immediately, get it out of the way. And you can commence it immediately too because it doesn't require civilian fact, it just requires support equipment. It might be a good reason to produce more support equipment in the long term as well. You can see that we're getting a stockpile of tanks now. This is perfect. And then we can start upgrading the actual tanks to a better version. But we're just waiting for this tank destroyer to complete. Pop, it's done. Then we get the upgrade, which is better tank, better tank. And then we can work on production efficiency, cheaper tanks. A lot of these don't even apply. Oh, these ones do armor and technology, I guess. And then work down this part of the focus tree and go for armor and defense or breakthrough. Yeah, armor and defense. And then we can apply on the Mayo. For this one, pop. And if we upgrade it, we still suffer some penalties. We have to do it though, because we have to use this Mayo. But no, do we? No, we don't. We could still produce with the old tank of the old designer. We're gaining funding for this Mayo by producing the tank. But then if we want to upgrade it later, yep. Yeah, you know what? I'm talking absolute rubbish. Yep, yeah, we'll produce the old tank as a part of the old Mayo, but the funding will go into the new Mayo. And when the new mile gets enough funding and enough traits, then we can unlock the better model. Dave, you're a genius. All right. What are the options here? I think upgrading the gun is probably going to be the bestest upgrade we can do. The auto cannon is going to give us a massive chunk of soft attack and hard attack. The small cannon gives you more piercing. 
Close support gun is good. However, it increases steel cost and the production cost is quite big. Can I add a medium howitzer on, but then it needs tungsten. And if we go for a heavy cannon, it has the best stats overall for piercing, soft attack and hard attack. However, it requires loads of tungsten, loads of chromium and loads of steel. I think we go for the small upgrade first. The improved auto cannon is the most cost effective gun in the game. Let's do it. And then we also add on a bigger turret. A three man turret adds a big chunk of breakthrough. So it's either 16.5 or three man medium turret giving 17.7. That's fine. I like that. So just to summarize, the bigger turret you put on the heavy tank, the more breakthrough you get. But be aware there are some penalties too, such as the production cost and the overall speed. Be aware to avoid the one-man medium turret because it has penalties to soft and hard attack. Why? I don't know. Maybe there's some historical context to that. Also avoid the fixed superstructures because they hurt your breakthrough, but they do give you reliability. So if it's reliability you need and you don't care about breakthrough, go for it. But overall, uh, breakthrough is really important for tanks, particularly that's what I'm stacking at the moment. The Type C pop. So what just happened there is I just upgraded from the Mark II artillery to the Mark III. And I lost 80% of my production efficiency because I'm on concentrated in industry. Because we're working more advanced technology now, it is more beneficial to be on dispersed industry. Hence the reason in most cases people stay on dispersed for the entire game. In 9 times out of 10, people select dispersed industry. All right, we're making mills in all the land we occupy. I like to ask Germany every now and then, will you give me contribution? They're saying no. I like to get as much land as I possibly can. You tend to find that the leader of the factions most likely to give you something if you contribute to the war. You tend to find that the minor powers, the non-leaders of the faction are less likely to give you stuff. Italy always says no, and so does Hungary. War versus the Soviet Union. And I have to join this war because I need to regain my core territory. And this is still cause. So if we regain it, it means we will almost certainly get that land and occupy it first. Then we can start building inside of it immediately as well. This is what we're working on. Uh, research, because there's nothing else. No, that's not true. We can start working on the passive bonuses. Let's do that. I'm concentrated for more building slots. Uh, maintenance 3, because I want to take advantage of the capture ratio for my tanks. Um, soft attack and uh, anti-air capabilities. Deploy the boyos. Can we train a bunch more? We can train one more. Oh, that sucks so bad. Only one more? Okay, we're trying a bunch more horses. All right, the tanks are here, lads. Sadly, I didn't have them in position and ready to attack, but now I will. Get on the front line. Staff office bonus to get the maximum bonus for our planning bonus. And we're probably going to have to attack immediately, actually, because otherwise we're going to lose any opportunity to make encirclements. We've got lead leases from the Vichy France and all the members of the Axis, so we'll take it. We have a bunch of divisions here that aren't doing anything. I guess we could convert one of these into the tank. Oh, no, we can't. We have to deploy these off first. We'll just deploy them and then we'll uh, disband them when we don't need them. We're making a big push here. And look, we're using the Marines to push into here. And that means it's mitigating the river penalty. That's actually really good. Unfortunately, not able to get in circum, but making a jolly good push here. I'm going to go. No, we're not going to go aggressive. That's really silly. Japan would like to put ports, put ships in our ports. What ports? Here in the Black Sea. And also you can see we're dropping mines here. We've dropped 641 mines. We're so close to laying the maximum amount of mines in the Black Sea. That's awesome. We're being super aggressive here. We're pushing, attacking, being aggressive. Keep an eye on logistics though, because we're losing quite a lot of guns. Just keep an eye on it. It's not a big deal though, because we can just disband some of these horses if we need to. And then deploy more of you guys. I guess I could convert them over to the... No, we can't. We have to delete that. Then we convert them over. Yep. And then when we convert them, we disband them to give them back. And we're kind of working the game mechanics here and working them against them. Can we convert another one, maybe? No, just the just the seven. Seven, right? We disband all the other ones. Yeah, there we go. Tempted to keep these ones behind just to exercise them to level two at least. They exercise from one to two a lot quicker than they do from two to three. So getting rid of that 25% combat modifier is really important. Finland would like to send us guns. I accept. And unfortunately, our fleet has been intercepted. And I think we can't, we're we not going to be able to lie any more mines now. Yeah, we've just lost the entirety of my fleet. Oh, no, we didn't. They all got damaged, but they all got back safely. All right, okay. But luckily, the mining situation now is probably causing the Soviets lots of problems. What I'd like to do is there's a good opportunity for encirclement here. So I'd like to push into here, holding shift and then right click. Oh, we're fighting the Soviet tanks here. And we're both able to pierce each other. I mean, to be fair, that'd be easy to pierce our tanks because I mean... But no, it's not easy to pierce our tanks. We're very highly armored, but we can't pierce their tanks because that makes sense because end of the day, our tanks are just um, machine gun tanks, aren't they? And our first encirclement. Nice. We go here, and then here, here. This is a little trick of making encirclement. So what I'm doing here is holding shift, right-clicking, attacking. But every time I move forward, 
I disable one of them, so I leave one behind. And we'll click them all and click this button to understand them to the front line. So that way, when they're done and moving, they're not going to back move back to the front line. And this is just a, like a little cheeky trick of where you can make it easy in circumference. It might be difficult, though, because the supply situation is still against us. But you know what? I'll give it a shot. Why not, right? You miss all the shots you don't take. Nah, we're not able to do it. But it was a... It was a cool way of showing off how you would be able to do it. Attacking from two angles here, the supply might be better. So one issue you might run into is if you stack too many of your tanks because they're so fat on one uh, province, you bastard, you might run into a situation where you have bad supply. So always spread them out as much as possible. The AI does its classic naval invasion thing. I always talk about this naval invasion thing because it happens every single game. And we'll try and do strike force here. And that might deny them their ability to do a naval invasion. But once again, I'm just going to try my best and see what I can do. This is usually good for us in the long run because it lets us encircle a few Soviet divisions. There we go. Lesson learned. Maybe we should leave behind some uh, some horses. At least two. One here and one here. And I guess one here too. Each on. Yeah, leave each on the port. For three of those. And train those up. All right, another opportunity for encirclement here. I'm going to go right click here and then right click here. They can't pierce us here. I mean, we're getting the full bonus of damaging their organization and just slice through the center. I'm actually really impressed the amount of damage I'm doing at the moment. As always, avoid just pushing the front lines and also try and make encirclements as you go. That's always going to work out better for you. Next up, logistics. And now we can have a little look at the bonus that maintenance give now. So for every tank battalion that's a part of this division, eight we will gain 0.01 capture ratio. Does it, does, it, does it even show us a stat in here? It doesn't. It's like a number that's not disclosed. How effective is this compared to the normal standard capture ratio? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We've got another option to go for doctrines too. Gives extra speed and coordination for, the, for our armor division. Let's do it. Just a heads up, this would have been useful earlier on. This allows you to build tank divisions for free. Motorized tank and mechanized divisions for free. It's really OP. You can save you like... 150 to 200 XP per division. However, mine did have Marines in them, so I'm not sure how that would benefit me anyway. I'm not planning to upgrade my tank. I'm still going to use the old model because I don't want to use Chromium. But what I'm going to do is upgrade this just to gain the funding bonus. And then later on when the, this finishes, I get to take advantage of a more advanced tank because I can research it ahead of time. All right, boys, push into here. Easy push. Once again, push into here. When you're pushing on the front line, always think about encircling. So, super important. It's a classic Hoi 4 thing. Classic World War II thing, to be fair. Always make a push. Try and get around the front line. Also, simultaneously, capturing victory points and capturing supply depots is super important because that allows you to alleviate supply for your troops and also mitigate supply for the enemy. Eventually, as the game progresses, we might be better off moving towards mechanized. The initial mechanized one also doubles the amount of hardness for trucks, which is 10% and drifts to 20%, which is good. But then, of course, mechanized themselves have an 80% mecha for hardness, which is also pretty good, which can be improved with miles as well. All right, there'll be other option here to make an encirclement. We'll push you guys into here. And you guys go into here. Mexico has joined the war. So allies and the Americans all teaming up. D-Day is inevitable, sadly. All right, one of our collaboration state has completed. And one of the downsides of when you complete an operation is your guys may die or have to go into hiding. And he's going to be in hiding for 45 days. But now I'm just going to reassign all the spies once again. The minute I get the option to do this one again, I will do. But right now we have a 0% spy network. So we're going to take a while before we can build another network. So this is the downside of doing operations. You lose spies. You lose network that you're working on. And then you don't benefit from the bonuses that you get from the spy network. And you also benefit from these bonuses you get from having an intel advantage as well. It usually says here, if you have an intel advantage, you can gain up to a maximum of a 15% attack bonus. Which is huge. 15% is huge. So uh, if you have the option to ever go for that, I'd recommend you go for that. All right. We have the option now to build in our home territory. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just build everywhere. Make a front line here. You guys go here. Classic common turn here. Make it the naval invasion through the Black Sea. We tried to help by making mines here, but that's all we could have done. If you look really closely, if you F2 it, you can see here the impact of our mine coverage is increasing our ship impact by 56% meaning that we're projecting naval uh, suppression, which means that they're less likely to do naval invasion, but we only have 20%, and I think they only need 50% to do a naval invasion, so we're nowhere near we need to be to deny them completely from doing any more uh, naval invasions. It's making some kind of impact, because there's a chance they could hit mines, for instance, when they do their naval invasion, which would really hurt them. Okay, let's import steel, which as we can. Keeps the production up for all of our... We have the option to improve our anti-air, giving one breakthrough. I don't think so. 
and artillery giving eight breakthrough nah not gonna happen but we'll look at this we're making breakthroughs here and the armor has arrived this is probably one of the easiest places to do encirclements in the world this area of western ukraine we've made an encirclement here and keep pushing once again it's mostly plain so you have the option to just to push in not suffer from any combat modifiers well, there's no terrain penalties you just can use all the stats of your tank and push forward and do loads and loads of damage now it might be tempting right now to try and upgrade your old tanks the ones with machine guns into the ones with the auto cannons please avoid doing that you need to have a bank of tanks in your logistics because remember we had about a thousand before now we're down to 660 so remember we are still losing tanks there's a net loss happening there but just be aware your tanks without your tank divisions without tanks are just practically useless they have no stats so try and focus mainly on keeping the tanks alive other than trying to focus on super quality amazing tanks that makes sense and circle the horse done it push into crimea yep i'm gonna do s to split them all into half right click s and then s and then fill out the rest we use our tanks to plow through crimea seems like the supply situation is really awful here though now we're able to break use the supply east of naval invasion once again realize we've not deployed the horses that later to biters select a general mountain boy hold on to the port yeah we're good and then we'll do a support attack to help finish up let's go and we'll put these guys on the coast and specifically say to defend the coast for the navies that's the area defense i'm using by the way we'll also put you guys into a new theater and put you on low priority meaning all new equipment will go to the main army on the front line this one before it gets sent over to this, these guys the supply here is an absolute traffic jam oh, i hate this so much and unfortunately the ai does this a lot we're able to make any gains here because the supply is just too bad so i'm just going to pull out here having low supply with tanks is just cripplingly bad it looks like the ai is probably going to do better without us yeah but what i would like to do if possible is build up the railway from our capital bucharest to here to here 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 and to here so what this is doing is it's increasing the transport capacity for per supply hub so each area has more individual supply and also, it increases the threshold of the quota that each supply depot can have, like this 23 of 20. So not only does it have a, an effect on the impact of overall per province, per state around the supply depot, but it also has an impact on the overall quality of that supply depot. And tanks have so high supply, obviously that can run into a lot of problems because it can create bottlenecks. This is a feature I never take advantage of, and only minor powers can do it. Reorganize the railway system. This allows you to build a supply depot with a times three discount. Only minor powers can do it. So technically, we're not fast enough at the moment to actually be a major power. Anyway, I'm going to save this spy. This spy that's not doing anything. And then these spies are going to build a network up so we can build another collab state. If you want to check on your collaboration governments, click on your flag. Click on collaboration here and you can see that we have a 30% collaboration government inside of the Soviet Union and it shows you the uh, compliance bonuses you would have got from that when you capitulate them and it also reduces their surrender limit by nine percent you go into the war you can actually see here you know we reduced it slightly and that collaboration hand indicates we've got a collaboration state on them it's not making much of an impact right now because we only have the first one you need a hundred percent one to make a massive overall impact there we go that's the focus tree mountain guns this is the same one that India has isn't it mountain guns mountain artillery I don't know how it helps me though because marines are still slow anyway there we go guys completed the romanian focus tree 1942 all the other focuses are kind of like really pointless so i'm not going to bother actually what i could do is go for this one engineering because this gives a railway construction bonus of 10 percent italy would like to send us oh no they wouldn't nope there was a pop-up there and it disappeared instantly i think it was about to say that romania would like to send us sorry italy would like to send us an expeditionary divisions i don't like to accept them because the ai all of a sudden randomly sometimes like to yoink them back and just be like well now nah, i've got a front line that's empty which is super annoying it's 500 mines here i'm not sure if they're sweeping for mines here or if they're hitting the mines and therefore it's hurting them is there a way we can find that out we would need to have 70% Intel network on their Navy to find that out. Interesting. I guess we could go for the upgrade for that and the Intel, the Art Navy department. Sure. So when you've got a maximum railway here, it kind of looks like silvery. Can you see the silvery one here? This is a level five railway. So this is a really quick way of looking at the map and seeing if it's maxed out. What I could do is just build up the network across the entirety of the front line to connect up to the germans i hate to do it because it's a massive waste of my production but what else can you do meanwhile operations we can do another operation into the soviet union 
What you can also do is click on automatically repeat over and over again until it's maxed out. The only downside to that is it's very difficult to maintain the 50% uh, network to be able to redo it again. But there's no harm of clicking that button, I suppose. At the same time, we might as well replace this guy, this guy with the elusive gentleman. And that gives us an extra spy. Okay, 70%. Is this enough to find out where they're doing missions? I think I was wrong. I think it's 80%. No, I still don't know what they're doing. The mine count is going down there. I think they might be sweeping for mines. Meanwhile, Doctrines, I'm not forgotten about you. The beauty of mobile warfare as a Doctrine is that you go for this path and it gives you a big fat breakthrough. But awesome. Can't complain about that, right? Breakthrough for tanks is why you make tanks, right? But at the same time, if all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't mind weakening my tank slightly, but if I go down this path, I get extra recruitable pop. So... I don't know. It's really cool. You get the very last part of the focus tree, you can like change your decision. All of a sudden, it's less about combat and more about uh, getting my manpower up. Big breakthrough in the north. That doesn't usually happen. Usually, the train's more difficult in the north and winter sets in quicker in the north too. So usually, the big breakthrough's in the south. And maybe if I'm causing problems here with this big breakthrough that I made and it's just causing constant supply problems and you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize that you're the problem. So we get a new spy, get one from the Soviet Union and I'm going to pop you... Oh, I don't know where to put you right there. Rostov and Don, Stalingrad, Leningrad. You spread them out and they're all close to each other. They'll build networks close to each other. I think it is better for building a network for the entirety of the nation to put them all in the capital. I always see a lot of people in multiplayer games just stacking them on top of each other. I'm not sure once again how effective that is. One of our spies has been captured, which is really annoying. So I have to send another spy to save them. Once again, I wish the spy system in Hoi 4 wasn't so RNG based and so random and it was more about... I don't know, you could prepare for a defense against something. I don't know, something like that, you know? But one thing I'm going to do, once again, another moments of I don't usually do this, is the automotive manufacturer. I'm going to change the bonus. Well, I was going to go for these two, but I am still going to go for these two because I want the breakthrough. So this left side is only motorized. This right side is only mechanized, but the center is motorized and mechanized. I want to get this hardness bonus to 5%. And I also want to reduce the cost of mechanized and also go for this hardness bonus as well. This one's give defense, breakthrough, and hardness and piercing. Defense is the biggest stat for mechanized, so I'll just go for that. Heavy tank, two, is complete. Heavy tank, three. All the gains that I made, they're all gone. Well, my guys are exercised to level three, so I'm going to put them back on the front. And I'm going to see if I can make opportunities to make a push. Look how well they're doing in the north, but in the south, they're absolutely doing absolute rubbish. Let's push into here. You guys push into here. And maybe an opportunity for an insert comment can be made here. Yep, click them. You can see the arrows that I made. Shift right click all the way around. And oh, the damage is so high. I'm so happy with this. And yep, is it doable? A lot of uh, divisions escaped, but I'm totally happy with that. Made an encirclement and we've counterattacked and encircled. Which is the added benefit that when we encircle now, we're capturing a lot because we've got maintenance companies. Captured 3,000 guns. We're about in the last month. 1,600 guns, 144 artilleries, 19 support, 7 anti-air, anti -air, 34 tanks, 18 tr and no anti-tanks. It's going to do a big coordinated push towards Kiev here. Whoosh. So the reason why the division do so well is there's a lot of soft attack stacking due to all the turrets that are on the tanks. Soft attack works very well against infantry, but they're also at the same time the division's got lots of hardness. Once again, a lot of these divisions don't have a lot of 0% uh, hardness. Ooh, for a second, I thought there was a bug. 44% hardness, that makes more sense. I'm tempted just to produce mechanized at this point. The beauty of special forces is they just use regular equipment. There's not like a special forces equipment, but mechanized feels like the way forward here. It's always a recurring issue. Like you can make the front line have lots of damage, but you end up in a supply situation if you're with allies on the front line, but they just create supply bottlenecks so therefore it doesn't help you to use all these awesome stats anyway and that's the reason why you end up going back to infantry every single time but that's why i do it anyway all right keep checking the spies see when they're unassigned and then reassign them once again and build that network up once again up 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 and we're working on another collaboration government which will be completed in 92 days and first major city of the soviet union has collapsed well i guess minsk's pretty big as well and they're getting pretty close to Leningrad too. AI's been a bit silly here. They've pushed further forward. And they've put themselves into a bad supply situation. Yep. And they let me mop up. Using my amphibious tanks here to push over. They're not really amphibious tanks there. They're marines paired with tanks. You know, when I think about it. Marines paired with tanks is kind of stupid if you think about it, isn't it? Tanks and marines is stupid. Because at the end of the day, tanks have got a big penalty for crossing rivers. 
And all Marines are doing is mitigating that penalty. You know? Let's have a look. So the, are the Pioneers affecting River Attack? Yeah, they are. So River Attack for this division is plus 4%. So it's actually removing the penalty that a tank would usually experience going over a river. Which is kind of cool, I suppose, if you think about it. But that's only for a regular river, not a bigger river like these ones. And there we go. We made a little encircle, and it was worth it. I'll be honest with you. The amount of damage I'm able to project in the south here is really bad. I think I would have just been better off making 7-2s. It's what really sucks about minor powers in Holy Fire. I feel like the amount of impact you can have is so limited just because of the issues you get with supply. It's one of the reasons, too, you guys don't see me play minor powers very often enough in Hoi 4. Uh, you, you wonder, like, Dave, why do you always play major fight? Are you, are you shit at the game? And I'm like, I'm not shit at the game. It's just that I have way more fun on majors because you can just do more in a game. And having to rely on your allies is just kind of a bit of a pain in the ass, that's all. Does that make sense? Does that explain everything? But as time goes on, you bake more mills. Makes sense, right? Then mills means you need to consume more resources as you do naturally when you produce more guns so therefore you have to import more equipment from abroad that hurts your overall construction industry because you have less civilian factories to use as part of your construction until you reach this middle point where you just have the right amount of sieves and the right amount of mills to balance but the question is when do you make sieves and when do you make mills it's all based upon the amount of resources you've got if you're importing a lot you need more sieves and if you're producing a lot and you've got extra resources flowing you want more mills of course, you always need civilian factories as a part of your industry because you need to be doing things like this, building railways and maybe even be able to build supply depots because the AI is really notoriously bad at not keeping up with their supply. So you have to, well, you have to guess, compensate for them and help them out, I guess. We have a naval invasion into Italy. Can the Italians hold? Usually, I say this all the time, but this is usually the beginning of the end, usually for the Axis, when they're unable to uh, defend against the constant naval invasions into the middle of uh, Italy. Okay diversify the elite forces what i'm going to do is something a little bit different we're going to go into special forces and we're going to get the mountaineers so at the end of the day if you want the support companies which i think are really op at the moment you can go for the one that gives you the wetlands river bonus amphibious bonus which is the pioneers which are kind of like engineers or you can go for the rangers which are kind of like recon which give a but attack and defense bonus in mountains we're just going to do exactly that we'll get the bonus We'll add rangers on for our recon. And I don't even think... Oh, hang on. I don't think we even have recon. No, we don't. I don't think that might deny us of making recon, though. Can we stop? We can add rangers on even though we don't have recon one. That doesn't make a lot of sense if you think about it. No, that doesn't even make sense. But I, I'm not complaining because I'm not complaining. All right, our manpower is super low right now. So we need to go extensive conscription. More man. And if I want any point, an injection of manpower, I can just get my 80k back from Germany. They lost... I, hang on a second. I send them 400k and they've lost 320,000k. What? Oh, the AI is so bad at microing garrisons. There's me on the other hand. Look at this lovely low resistance. And then look at the AI and we're like 36. 38. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So many, many Romanian lives have been lost to partisans. Of all the things, partisans. Okay, I'm going to give this land to Germany. This one and this one. I'm kind of hoping the reason why I'm doing that is they'll defend it. Yeah, they will defend it. Okay, and then I can pull off my tanks and use them to defend mainland Italy. Because if Italy falls, the whole thing is going to come crashing down. I'm getting a lot of pleasure from doing this. Look at all these stranded divisions. Yeah, I'm going to gain so much pleasure from doing this. Britain, bye-bye. See you later. Oh, what a fat encirclement. I want to see how much I've captured as well. So, combat log. Click on the little paper next to the theater. Drop that down to one month. If you hover over it, you can actually see what you just captured. 2,000 guns, 38 trucks, 4 tanks, 26 medium tanks. Not bad. Spies, they finished their mission. Get another Soviet spy to build the network quicker. Spy, spy, and spy. Also, simultaneously do another collaboration government. Can we do one immediately? Yes, we can. Send them off. Can we save that other spy? Yes, we can. Send them off. Off you go. Keep an eye on your logistics because sometimes you need support equipment, civilian factories, and infantry equipment to do collaboration states. And some rare instances, you also need transport planes. I know that's really annoying, especially if you're not building any as well. Other special forces doctrine, go for the battlefield intelligence. Now, this is good because it means that the cost of adding on a rangers is half price. So the 10 XP is 5 XP. All right, put this guy on. We're going to add the rangers on. Can't do it because it's 10 XP. What? Didn't you just say it was half price? Or is that the cost for mountaineers? It is the cost for mountaineers. It even makes the cost for marines go down as well. That might be a, a special force of marine doctrine I've forgotten about. Okay, forget it, whatever. Steel's become a problem. We're gonna have to get that from Sweden. Once again, look at this one. That dash means that when I trade with Sweden, 
I'm doing it over a land route. You see the, the blue line going through Germany, Denmark, into Sweden. That means I'm not using any convoys. And using convoys means they can get intercepted. And plus, I lose the overall amount of convoys that I would have to use for other things. Put it that way. Like we're using convoys here, disappointingly. Because there's no railway connection here. I guess I could make one. There's me building railways in Italy. I thought the railways always run on time in Italy. Well, at least the railways run on time. Another collaboration government. Another 30%. So going to Romania, collaborations. We're now at 60%. In the olden days, it used to vary between like a, like 20 to 40% per collaboration. It would always vary. It looks like it's now straight four collaborations before you maxed out. And this has reduced the surrender limit now. This progress by 18% for the Soviet Union. It used to be an old glitch in the olden days. If you build a full collaboration government inside of France, if you just declare war on France, their surrender limit was so low, they would just instantly surrender before you even taking a single piece of French land, which I thought is, was, was a pretty funny bug. Mechanized. The only downside of making mechanized is you need rubber. And there is no rubber in the entire world. Bit of Germany, bit of Finland, and that's it. Switch out rangers from pioneers. You know what I've just realized? Because pioneers are classed as engineers, you can have pioneers and also rangers so you're gaining an attack bonus and defense bonus into mountains and hills stacked with the amphibious river marsh penalties man that makes an insane tank the only downside is we've lost a little bit of soft attack yeah balls to it it's worth it it's worth it spies been rescued assign the spies again I always think the most important place is to put them into the capital. Let's just do the strategy where we stack them on top of each other. So I presume the upside to this is we build a network inside of the capital quicker. The downside is it doesn't appear to be a downside. It, in fact, looks more effective than it once was. Oh, no, 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 no. So the areas with the lines is where we're building the network. But the areas that are this are actually decreasing their network capabilities. Okay, so it looks like it's better for operations to put them all in the capital. But it's not as good for uh, building local network strength to mitigate planning bonus and whatnot. I feel like I had the best job in the world attacking the Soviet Union. So prestigious, so strong, so potentially so much power to project in the world, Romania. And then all of a sudden I'm just defending the Italian's coastline now. I feel like, uh, I feel like I've been outtake, outtake, outtake. I feel like I've been relegated. Germany would like manpower to help them. I'm going to give you 310k. I'm going to go service by requirement. It's, it feels like the amount of effort that i put in is making minimal amount of effort to the war because these tanks are just useless i should have just gone with infantry so i'm just kind of better off defending the coastline of italy like this and uh sending manpower to germany to help them with the garrisons easy okay cast armor increasing the cost by 10 and then easy maintenance to bring the cost down a little bit and this gives me a little bit more hardness of crap ton of armor and breakthrough. Yeah, let's do it. Give it a different icon so it stands out. Yeah, there we go. The gray boy. And we'll start upgrading too. I suppose we could go for the upgrade tech as well, just so we can do upgrades more effectively. We've got a massive stockpile of tanks now, so it's just worthwhile overall. And at least our tanks will have more firepower. Yeah, 3k tanks. Definitely worth now. Whoa, Germany! Be my hero! Do it! All of a sudden, Germany just pulled their finger out and they're like... Let's make something happen. The beauty of area defense is the AI will automatically counterattack into these regions. And I know I'm always going to have better divisions of them. So they just completely obliterate them. Easy. All right. Carlab State has been done. Where do I put my spies now? Do I put them in the new capital of the Soviet Union in the Far East? And at the same time, we're 100% collaboration. Okay, I changed my mind. We're going to spread them out. So we gain the bonuses to the attacking ability. They should be really close to capitulating at this rate. Where are they? They are 88%. I wonder, because I made the collaboration state, how much land I'm going to gain from this, whether it's going to benefit me. Can I have Ukraine? No, I can't. Okay. Kiev? I'll take it. Well, my oil trade is significantly less lucrative now because the Germans have got oil. Yep, nobody wants my oil anymore. All right, let's go for motorized drive. Then I replace this. Oh, you still have to spend this. What? I thought the whole idea of this is it made it free. It doesn't work. So delete all of these. If you hold shift and click, you can get rid of them really quickly. And then I make a new one, but they still cost 20 XP. So that's kind of glitched. It's an attache to Germany. Maybe that'll give me some more army XP. Pop goes Romania. My contribution is 11%. I have to take back my own core territory. Oh no, come on, really? You know, make me take back my own land. And then I have to battle from the land that I took. Come on, give me something. And because the contribution's massive, they're probably going to get this land. Probably key from me. No? All right, maybe I'll get something. 
We, we missed one little chunk of land. Can we get their navy? Oh, and that's all we were able to get. Why is this red? Is this owned by the Soviet Union? That's the Russian Empire. Why have you decided to pop it this region but nowhere else? Maybe, oh, maybe they're the only thing they could afford. Pop it in is cheaper. Now, changing government is cheaper than taking the land. So that's the only thing they did. So they did this to spite me. That one chunk of land I could have taken, the AI denied me the ability to get it. Oh, that just feels really cheap and mean. Hey, guys, we've learned a lot from this campaign, okay? Uh, collaboration states, mad strong, but they don't seem to work. Wow, I found so many bugs in this play. Let's play. What is going on? Yeah, the collaboration state's not worked. It's not worked. So what you're meant to do is get maximum compliance if you have a collaboration state. Yeah, that's completely glitched. We were meant to have 100% compliance throughout the entirety of Russia, but it's not giving me it. It still says the collaboration state hasn't actually fired. That's totally glitched too. Yeah, so this doesn't work the way it should. And the collaboration state's not worked. I think it might be because I didn't cap the Soviet Union. It was capped by Germany. Credit to Germany though, because they did a really jolly good job of sweeping up the Soviet Union. It feels like uh, it slipped and then they slid all the way through and they didn't have to go past the Urals because they were able to uh, cap them with the collaboration state. Oh, they renamed Hindenburg and Ludendorff. Sounds like something from Harry Potter. There's three cities that get renamed too, but they're the only two. Where's the third one? I'm not really happy with this one because it's nice that you can add on so many cool things to tank divisions like this and do some really cool awesome things. But it's frustrating that when you play as a minor power like Romania, because you've just not got any basic resources like steel, you're constantly struggling to actually find your foot in the world and make a difference. If it wasn't for my spies, it probably would have been a German stalemate. But my contribution to the actual war itself was absolutely barely minimum it was practically nothing it's a win but it doesn't feel like a win i know you guys are probably going to say to me like why don't you just continue dave but the problem is i don't have a navy so i'm never able to invade the uk or the united states so this kind of campaign is kind of redundant i guess i'm just here on the sidelines cheering on japan go japan go japan i hope your navy defeats the united states so therefore i can do something right and because navy takes so long to build in hoi the making naval dockyards I mean i'll not have a substantial navy until like 1946, 1947. And I'm not playing for three hours, just staring at the screen, waiting for dockyards to build. Welcome to the inevitable minor power in Hoi 4, guys. It unfortunately, it's not very fun. Guys, do you think anything went well in this campaign? I know I'm being very negative near the end, but let me know in the comments if you think anything went well or you learned something new. And of course, do this no one's comments, like, subscribe, and so YouTube will provide more of this kind of content to you if that's what you're into. And that's a way of letting YouTube know. If you like this video, this one on screen right now will be useful to you. So give it a click if that's what you're into. I'll see you guys next time. I love you. Bye-bye.